Hi guys, welcome to this first video on databases and SQL. In this first video, I just want to do a high level overview of what a database is and what the fundamental components of a database are. Cover some terminology and give a preview of what we're going to do in this series as we learn how to work and query databases using SQL or the SQL language. Okay. So what is a database? A database can be defined in a few different ways. You can simply think of a database as a collection of data stored in some organized fashion. A database is a container, usually a file or a set of files that stores data in an organized fashion. So what is a database management software or DBMS? DBMS, you might come across this acronym. That's the actual software you're using to actually access the database. So you need to kind of separate these two thoughts, these two objects. A DBMS is actually the software to access and manipulate the database. Okay, so you create the database using a DBMS, like right now I'm using Microsoft Access, just because I have access to access. But other common DBMSs that you'll come across are SQL Server from Microsoft, MySQL, MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL, Sybase Adaptive Server. These are a few among many other DBMSs, okay? All right, so now that we're kind of established on uh, the, the fact that I'm using Access and what a database generally is, let's go through some of the basic components. Um, in any database, you're gonna have tables. A table is a structured file that stores data of a specific type. So let me, let's take a look at what I have here. I have tables here, as you can see, uh, access organizes the tables along this little margin over here on the left side. I have six tables here I created for the forthcoming examples I'm going to be working th with you through. Um, I could double click on these tables and you could see what they look like. I have clients, items, order items, orders, and suppliers. So between these five tables, I should be able to do and illustrate a lot of different functionality using uh, SQL to do uh, querying. Um, within each table, so let's just take orders for example, uh, let's take items for example. I have columns and rows. Columns are sometimes referred to as fields, and rows are referred to as records in database lingo. So I have item ID, supplier ID, item name, item price, item cost, and then I have about, I think we can see here actually, we could cheat 11 rows or records. Now, this is the data sheet view. That's what Excel uh, Access rather calls the data sheet view. You can go to the design view, which is what I used to create this table before I started populating it with actual data and see how it was designed. So here you see those field or column names and here you see the data types. So the data types allow you to restrict the type of data that can be put into a particular field. So if you have something like item price, that's a currency. Item cost is a currency. So we can restrict the input of data into that field to be a currency. Whereas the name of the item, IDs, uh, can be short text. You have further control down here on the field properties and you can get very deeply involved in this but that's not the intention of, of this video here. Uh, so you have a lot of control in creating your table, the structure of it, designing it, what Access calls designing it. And then you'll notice a little key here, 
and what that key is that's called a primary key so a primary key every table should have at least one of these this is a column or a set of columns that uniquely identify every row in a table so there will never be a case where you'll have duplicate rows because the primary key will always be different for each row so it'll uniquely identify the rows and if in case there is an issue you can have two like in one of my tables I actually have two two primary keys okay so going back now to data sheet view up here I see the actual structure of my table and then I actually started populating the table with some records rows right so I did the same basic thing for the rest of these tables I'll flip back and forth to data sheet view and design view and you could see how I designed it here I have two primary keys you see the data types I use to restrict input in each of the fields so I gave a little bit of thought to this uh, but not too much you can get much more involved like I said with this field properties section um, for all of these tables okay that's great so you need tables that's a very fundamental building block of a database if you think of a database as like a filing cabinet you need files to go in it right and that's what the tables are now the actual records in each table you could think of as the actual uh, pieces of paper inside the folders or files that go inside the database and now you're starting to build up maybe a, an analogy with a, a real world kind of uh, sorry a more tangible uh, example of a filing cabinet okay great um, now it's not enough to just have tables that would be pretty boring and um, it, could, it could be still useful actually to just store stuff but it's ultimately what we want to be able to do is use our database harness its power to ask questions from it and pull information that we want out of it so in order to do that efficiently we need these tables to speak to each other okay and what I mean by speak to each other is, is we need to define the relationship define some kind of relationship uh, between these tables these aren't completely unrelated things as you can kind of guess although I didn't mention this is kind of like a business is a, a very basic kind of um, business database where we have client lists item lists order lists suppliers etc so we keep all these things in separate tables but obviously they're all related to each other and we need these these things to be related to each other but uh, the tables can't relate to each other on their own we have to explicitly define those relationships so the way we do that at least with access the DBMS Microsoft access is to go to database tools ribbon I'm on 2016 but it shouldn't be too different in older versions and then you see the relationships group pick relationships and here you can actually I'll clear it out and show you from scratch so you could say so you would start with a blank slate because you haven't defined relationships show table and you could add all your tables if all of them are going to be related to each other and then define the relationships between them so let me pull these around and clean this up a little it looks more complicated than it actually is Okay, and I'll tell you what all this stuff means. So, so these boxes clearly represent the tables that we were just talking about, right? They're abstracted to just show the fields and the name of the table, right? So that's from here, okay? Now, the lines from each table to the other tables are act were actually defined by me. Now it's not my intention here to teach you how to make these relationships. It's actually not that difficult. If you've thought it out, how your tables relate to each other, uh, you literally grab one field <clears throat> from one of the tables, click on it, drag that over to the other table, and drop it on top of another field that connects the two. So here you see I have customer ID in clients, 
and I have customer ID and orders. Well, these are the same customers. So if I want those two fields to be connected, to be related, I grab from one and drag and drop into the other. That's how Access lets you interactively create these relationships. If you're using another DBMS, you're going to need to look up how you create these relationships. So, um, yeah, and then you see the one and the infinity. What that means is you should read that as one, two, many. Okay, so we have a client list here. So there, there are clients here. There's no duplicate. So for example, if, if I'm one of the clients, I'll show up only one time in this table. But I might make an order. I, I might have made an order last year and then an, another order um, a few months ago. So I might have made two or three or four orders. So I'm not going to show up more than once in the clients table, but I'll show up multiple times possibly in the orders table. That's why we have a one to many relationship. Okay, and the same logic goes for the rest of these. So you have to uh, sit down when you create your database after you've created the tables or while you're actually thinking of tables to create and think about how those tables are going to be related to each other. Okay, you don't need to make one table that create, contains all fields. That might not, that's a very messy way to go about it. You create separate fields that are focused and then let those fields talk to each other vis-a-vis -vis these relationships, okay? Once these relationships are defined, later on when I do, when I'm creating queries, this will aid in being able to pull different information from different tables into one place, if that's what I'm after, okay? So again, this is a high level video here, so I'm not gonna dwell on any single one of these topics. Uh, it, so we have tables now, and and then finally, I want to maybe end this uh, part, this first video on talking about querying. So once a database is created, meaning once tables are created, tables contain fields, fields are uh, uh, tables are populated with actual data, actual rows are uh, we have actual records like like we do in our in our table. Uh -huh. And once we have this, now we want to actually not just let this serve as a storage device. We want to be able to quickly and efficiently and intelligently access certain information from our database. For example, we might be interested in finding out which clients spent more than a certain amount of money or which clients uh, uh, are, uh, live in or reside in the state of California. Those are called queries, questions. And the way you pose those questions to a database so that you can actually get that information back and make some kind of um, useful action from the results is through the language of SQL or SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language. So very briefly on what uh, about the language because we're going to spend the next bunch of videos in the series step by step learning the SQL language. SQL is a very basic language that's focused on doing this task of querying databases. So it is very specific. You're not going to use SQL to write an email server or a game or something like this. Okay. But it's not a proprietary software, meaning that it'll work for any database. So I'm, I'm using the DB, DBMS access. Don't let that fool you. Uh, that's just the software I'm using to access my database. You could be using any database management software and SQL w can be applied. So it's not a proprietary language. Um, okay. so. We're going to learn how to use SQL to, to, to manipulate and query our databases in the coming videos. Let me just show you, lastly, what a query might look like and what the language might look like. So I actually have uh, organized here tables and queries, just so you get like a view of so, some uh, more developed work and not just a blank data set, uh, uh, database. 
So look at this query I created. What I actually did was I looked for, I can, I, I can barely remember what I did here. So I, it was a very basic query. I looked for all items that, uh, fr from all, all fields, from the table items. Uh, this is this is actually what you're looking at here is SQL. This is pr probably part of the first tutorial I'll do. The most basic things, uh, which is select and from the, the the select a statement with the from clause. Uh, I ran this data this, and what I got was all the fields from the items table. So that might not be so interesting. Let me quickly just uh, maybe update this. And I might want a particular column. So, so let me see what I have here. Item name. Maybe I want the item name from items uh, where, now I'm getting ahead of us. I just want to, you to get a preview where the uh, item price, I hope I'm spelling the name correctly, is greater than 50, let's say. Okay, so do you see what happened there? Uh, let's go to items. I have many items here, right? But uh, only uh, these guys are over $50. So I was able to pull those six or so items and all I asked for was the name of the item. So here's the name. So I got these names. So if I go back to the results of the query, you see the names of the seven items that had a price of greater than 50. So that was just a very basic example of what a query looks like. And we're going to go through, through how, to, how to do these queries with SQL rather than using the d database management softwares particular graphic user interface like for example uh, access has this design view so I don't want to use that I want to teach you SQL okay so uh, that's pretty much a preview of what's to come so I hope in this video you got a high level view of, of what uh, a database is I'm gonna use access because that's what I have access to on my computer here to to just uh, illustrate these concepts but there I'm always going to use SQL to run the queries so please uh, s come back and watch part two three and beyond I'll be, there'll be many parts so you can build up your database uh, skills and your SQL skills all right so till next time subscribe share comment and have a great day